Hey church, Pastor Allen, First United Methodist Church, Georgetown, and we're here with an April update. I want to share two significant pieces today in my update, and the first comes from this gentleman on your right to my left. Um, Pastor Jim has something to share with us today that will uh, change the way we look here towards the end of the summer. So, Pastor Jim. Uh, the end of the summer is still going to be coming, uh, but uh, I am announcing that effective August 25th, I'm going to re-retire, uh, which means I really am going to retire. Uh, and uh, as to what I will be doing, I haven't made those decisions yet, where I'm going to live and what I'm going to be doing, but uh, I know that my, my time here at First United Methodist Georgetown will come to an end. Uh, it has been an incredible ride. I've been incredibly grateful for your love and support, for your faithful acts of mercy and compassion uh, to me and to the community uh, at large, um, but it's something that, that I've decided I, I'm, I'm ready to do. So I wanted to let you know that early um, and let you know that I, I don't want to be saying goodbye for four months because there's work to be done, uh, but uh, just wanted to put that out there so we, we know what's happening and when it's coming. So Jim Connor, uh, for me, represents uh, a very strong bridge uh, from uh, Pastor Yvonne's time here at first and then my time as senior pastor. And uh, it was because of Jim's leadership and because of who he is that made um, this a significantly easier welcome for me and for my family at this church. Uh, Jim has done so much for us uh, in my uh, short time here with you. Um, one of the things that Jim brings is a joy and a humor. Um, joy, his, his humor is more than the incredibly they're thoughtful. wonderful, thoughtful <laughs> jokes that we get in the sermons. Uh, but there's just a way he carries himself and the way he goes about ministry and the way he cares for you and for each of us, for the staff um, that has become part of our culture and who we are as a church. Uh, Jim also has an incredible heart for justice, and that is apparent in the things he asks about and the things he cares about, the, the wisdom that he has in uh, meetings. And so Jim's going to be uh, missed, and uh, plans as we get towards the end of the summer will be announced about uh, how we will fill this role, and that's still coming together. But one thing we do know is that there will be a re-retirement party at the end of August. So the last Sunday in August, uh, what is that? That is August 25th. August 25th is a Sunday, and Jim will uh, preach for us that Sunday morning, and then we will have a uh, kind of that blowout, re-retirement, reception party. Uh, so friends, as you're planning your summer, as you're planning your times to be away, uh, do what you can to be here for that August 25th. That'll be a really special day. Um, so that's our first announcement. Uh, the second is that uh, we have a very important uh, meeting in the United Methodist Church coming up here in just a week now, a general conference. Uh, some of you that are new to this church, new to the denomination, uh, will be uh, unfamiliar with this language, but general conference is the meeting that usually happens every four years. It is the only body in the denomination that can meet to change laws and change policies. And we've been waiting for this meeting for many years because of COVID, because of travel restrictions of delegates. Um, this is really General Conference 2020, but it's happening four years later. Um, we're, we're finally there. Uh, this is where we realize and see that the United Methodist Church is truly a worldwide denomination. Um, many of our brothers and sister denominations are uh, very heavily located in the United States. And so when they make a change, when they make a decision, it can happen uh, with a certain speed for us. Um, we are trying to um, gather the entire world. We have delegates from Russia, Africa, Philippines, um, they all have to travel, they all have to have interpreters, they all have different cultures, and you can understand that that becomes uh, a real, it's powerful, but it's also uh, part of the difficulty of uh, some of those changes. 
Um, Jim is a delegate. Now, Jim is part of the delegation for General Conference, and it's uh, an honor to be a delegate uh, from the Central Texas Conference. And he's been going to so many meetings and preparations, and this is going to be a big, big event for us to have Jim there. So, Jim, tell us a word uh, about your um, what you're looking forward to with General Conference and some of the history with that. Uh, in a word, uh, excited. Uh, I went to my first General Conference in, in 1988 in St. Louis, um, and I was uh, elected to serve on the dele delegation here in Central Texas in 2014, so I was able to be in Portland and St. Louis, and I've been looking forward to this General Conference. Uh, it is a, an absolute privilege and humbling to be gathered with uh, uh, United Methodists from around the world uh, who are committed to making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and, and who, like us, believe that we're all beloved children of God and, and that we're called to share God's love wherever we are and wherever we go. And I'm very excited that we're finally having this meeting because I expect uh, that we're going to find a way to, to move forward in the way that God's calling us to go. And it's just humbling and exciting. It's humbling. It's exciting. Um, there's a lot of anxiety around General Conference, as it is just around the corner. Um, many of you may know that we have gone through a season of disaffiliations. Um, we have a season of churches that have left the United Methodist Church, uh, many for various different reasons. And so we're almost a new group of people gathering in Charlotte, North Carolina, here for uh, 16 days, I think. Um, and there's some opportunities at this general conference. There's some opportunities to really live into and uh, be who we are when it comes to a denomination that welcomes all around a large table of grace. And uh, this is part of what we talk about when we say that we are a church of the big tent. Um, it is uh, probably not a surprise to you that one of the leading uh, topics that you'll hear about through General Conference is inclusion of LGBTQ persons. Um, this has been an ongoing conversation since 1972. Since 1972, this has been uh, something that we've gathered every four years to discuss and to debate and to pray about. Um, part of being in the big tent is that many of us have strong, differing opinions and beliefs about uh, inclusion of LGBTQ um, persons. But while we're under the big tent, it is important that everyone is welcome. It's important that everyone is safe. And there's some language that's been used since 1972 uh, that has caused harm. And uh, it, is, it is a hope that some of that language can be removed and that we can continue to be a big tent church, a church that has differences, a, a church that sees things differently. Um, but our community here needs the voice of this church. Um, the community here in Georgetown needs um, the grace that we have. Um, there are people that need to know that God loves them. And so while we can have differences on, um, on the many issues that we'll hear about over the next couple of weeks, I want to encourage you to think about the value and the benefit of us being united and being together. Um, I'm excited about this, um, and I know that many of you will have questions. Uh, some of you will uh, receive emails and receive newsletters uh, from all kinds of different various places. Come talk to us. Come ask us some questions. Um, I am aware that um, this is not an issue. It's, it's, it represents people, and it represents lives. It represents our daughters and our sons. Uh, it represents people that we have in our congregation right now that we love deeply. And so I want us to be real careful about um, how we are over the next couple of weeks. Um, it will not be hard to find information that is misleading. That is just the nature of this work. It is political. Um, everything that we dislike about our country's politics and the way it becomes such a hard place to be, 
Um, that is part of this process. And, and I sure wish it wasn't that way, but it is. And so you'll have emails, you'll have newsletters, you'll have things that, um, that you'll read, and not all of it is from the United Methodist Church. So um, ask your pastors, ask around if you have something that comes up. Um, but I, in, I, want, I want to let you know that I'm excited about the opportunities ahead. I've told you before that I think there are generations that, that the church has missed um, because they haven't seen a church that is welcome and, and loving. And even though we disagree, uh, this can be a place where we can love alike. Do you remember that phrase? We talked about that earlier this year. Uh, there was a quote from John Wesley that all three of the pastors preached on. Let me read that to you one more time. Though we cannot think alike... May we not love alike. May we not be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. So I hope you're hearing in my voice that this is an exciting opportunity. It's also a time for us all to be tender and, and, and caring for each other. And I want all of you listening to this to know that wherever you find yourself on this topic that you're welcome at First United Methodist Church, Georgetown. It's harder and harder to live that out um, as, as a people. It's hard to, to be a, a church of the big tent. It's hard to live in the gray. It's hard to be in the middle. We're in a culture where people demand that you pick a side and that you vilify the other. Let's not be that. All right. This has turned into a sermon, and we're getting into 12 minutes. And... Uh, so, friends, this guy's special, and I know you're going to want to say a, a quick word of appreciation to him uh, here in April as we look forward to uh, several more months into the summer and into, uh, into August. And I also know you'll be praying for Jim, um, praying for our denomination, praying for the leaders that will be representing us at uh, General Conference in the next few weeks. All right. Jim, anything else to add? <laughs> Thanks for letting me be part of this uh, video. Alan does such a good job on his own. I, I hope I didn't bring him down. I, I haven't had a guest host in a while. It's okay. That's all uh, right. I don't think I was hosting, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Friends, thank you so much, and we'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.